Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at accounting for investments in international operation. This topic is covered briefly in financial accounting, much, much more in depth in my advanced accounting course. So in this session, it's basically the basics of investments in international operation. In my advanced accounting, I have, I would say, 10 to 15 different lectures. Each one is 20 to 30 minutes with examples explaining this concept. I just want to let you know this up front. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover. If you like my lectures, please like them. It doesn't cost you anything. Share them. Put them in playlist. Let, let other people know about them. Also connect with me on Instagram. On my website, you will find additional resources to supplement your accounting education or if you are studying for your CPA exam, CMA exam, or the enrolled agent, I strongly suggest you check out my website. Once again, this topic is covered much more in advanced in my advanced accounting course. So let's go ahead and start to talk about investments in international operation. What are we talking about here? Well, we have a US company that's operating in Europe, in Asia, in South America, and what happened as a result, they're going to be faced with two accounting challenges. What are those two accounting challenges? Well, one, they're going to have purchases and sales in a foreign currency. So they're going to buy material, buy supplies in a foreign currency or sell their product. When they sell it, they're going to sell it in a foreign currency. And the other issue that they that they face is they're going to have to prepare their financial statements. If, if, if it's a U.S. company, they have to prepare their financial statements using U.S. GAAP. So what they have to do, they have to prepare consolidated financial statements with their international operation. In this session, we don't worry about consolidated financial statements. This is where I cover this in my advanced accounting. In this session, we'll focus on, we'll work one example for sale, one example for purchase using a foreign currency. Now, just a little bit of basics about exchange rate between between different uh, currencies now each country use their own currency for example if you're if you're operating in europe when you sell your mcdonald when you sell your food you're going to receive euros you will not receive us dollar so each country uses its own currency now in some circumstances some 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 countries use a us dollar or a third currency but we're not going to go into that topic in this session because that's way beyond the scope of this course so to make a transaction in another country, you have to purchase, you have to acquire those units. So if you purchased supplies from Germany and they want to be paid in euros, then you have to buy the euro and pay them. Okay. So the cost of the currency is called the exchange rate and the exchange rate fluctuate on a regular basis. The best way to illustrate what we're trying to do here is to work an example. Maybe one is selling and one is buying. Just to give you an idea, how do we account for foreign sales and foreign purchases starting with the sales let's assume a boston company it's a u.s company makes a credit sales to a london outfitter a british retail company so on december 12 2016 boston sells ten thousand worth of pounds of goods with payment due february the 10th boston keeps its record in the u.s dollar at the date of the sale the british pound was one dollar and eighty cent so we basically have two date listed here, but we're going to have to worry about three dates. One is the date of the sale. So the date of the sale is December the 12th. This is when we made, this is when we made the sale. On the date of the sale, we are going to recognize a receivable because we're not getting the money. And how much do we value the receivable based on the value at that date? So on that date, we needed, a, we expect to receive $18,000 given a pound of $1.80. So on that date, December 12th, the date of sale, we have an account receivable for $18,000 credit sales of $18,000. This is the first date. The second date that we have to worry about is in this situation, December 31st, 2016. Why? That date is not listed in the problem. The reason I have to worry about this is because I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be getting paid my money until February 2017. So I'm gonna I'm gonna here's what I'm assuming. I'm assuming year end. I'm assuming December 31st, 2016 is my year end. I made the sale. I made the sale here, and I'm gonna be receiving the money here. This is this is the sale. This is December the 12th. And this is when I received the payment. 
So in between, I'm going to have to prepare my financial statements. On December 31st, I have to determine what happened to this investment. What do you mean investment? Well, yes, account receivable now is an investment. I basically have an account receivable in a foreign currency. So let's see what happened on December 31st. So Boston Company is a December 31st year end company. On December 31st, the British pound has an exchange rate of $1.84. Excellent, excellent. Now I can get more money for my pounds, but I'm not getting the money. Well, now my 10,000 pounds, I can exchange them if I have them at $1.84. Therefore, I have 18,400. So my receivable went up by 400. Unfortunately, they're not paying me on December 31st, but I have to value. I have to bring my currency to bring it to market value. Therefore, I'm going to increase my receivable by $400 and I'm going to book a foreign currency gain. Basically, I have a gain of $400. Okay, This is what happened. Now, here's what happened to my account receivable. Now, let's keep, keep track of this because we're going to come back and work with this. So this is the account receivable subsidiary ledger. First is I debited the balance 18,000. I had a balance of 18,000. Then I debited the receivable 400 on December 31st, adjustment for foreign currency, and it's 18,400. Now, the third date is the date I'm going to be paid, which is February, which is February the 10th. So let's, let's see what's going to happen on February the 10th. On February the 10th, Boston received the money. Now they wire us the pound. Boston immediately exchanged the pound for US dollar. The exchange rate on that date though was dollar 78 per pound when we got the money we're going to be receiving less us dollar so how do we do this basically they're going to send us the money and we're going to convert the money into us dollar so now when we convert the money into us dollar they send us ten thousand pound we can only convert it at dollars dollar 78 therefore we're going to be receiving seventeen thousand eight hundred we thought we had a receivable of eighteen thousand four hundred as of as of december 31st so this is what happened here. Now, he, let, let me tell you this. In the real world, companies don't do that. They don't, they don't get caught with their pants down like this. What they do is they hedge those positions. And this is what I teach in my advanced accounting and international accounting course. What do, what do companies do? What do companies do to hedge so this they don't experience this loss? But let's take a look at the transaction. Um, we debit cash 17,800 because this is how much we're going to exchange those pounds. We're going to credit the receivable 18,400 because this is how much we have receivable. And what happened is now we have a loss of $600 and those gains and losses goes to the income statement. So at the beginning, we were happy. The British pound increased in value. We were happy. It means the US dollar det deteriorated in value. So if you have a receivable, if you have a receivable, you want your currency and my currency is USD, I want my currency to go down if I have a receivable. Now, if I have payable, it's the opposite, okay? So if I have a receivable, I want my currency to go down, the dollar appreciate in value, which it gave me less US dollar when I exchanged it, okay? So simply put, I have to remove the receivable. Now the receivable is zero. That's why I credit the receivable, 18,400. Remember, if you have a receivable on a foreign currency, you want your local currency, US dollar, to deteriorate, to go down, to depreciate, so you could buy more of the of your local currency. Let's take a look at another purchase example. Let's assume NC Imports, a, it's a U.S. company, uh, uh, purchases product costing twenty thousand euros from Hamburg, which is a German company. On that date, the exchange rate was dollar twenty per euro. So it's a U.S. company buying supplies from a German company, and they owe them twenty thousand dollars, twenty thousand euros. Sorry. On that date, the euro is January fifteen dollar twenty dollar twenty. Therefore, we we bought the inventory twenty thousand pound twenty thousand euros times dollar twenty. So we have inventory of twenty four thousand accounts payable of twenty four thousand. Now what happened is for this example, we made the purchase in January and we're going to be receiving the money. Uh, we're going to be paying the money in February fourteenth. Therefore, therefore, we don't have to worry about year end adjustment. So this is there's no year end adjustment in this example. When we were ready to pay the German company, when we were ready to take the US dollar and convert it into euros, now we have to pay dollar twenty-five. Okay, well, what does that mean? It means we have to pay a little bit more than twenty-four thousand because if we're gonna convert the US dollar into a euro, we need twenty thousand euros and we're gonna have to pay dollar twenty-five. Now we need twenty twenty-five thousand dollars, which is more than what we thought initially 
of 24. Once again, companies don't do this. Companies, they hedge those positions. Hedging foreign currency transaction is covered in, a, in, a, in another course in my advanced accounting. Therefore, what we do is we debit accounts payable. We have to remove this accounts payable of 24,000. The cash that we'll pay is 25,000. And unfortunately, the difference is a loss of $1,000. Now what you had, you had a, you had an accounts payable and your currency deteriorated. It worked against you. If you have an accounts payable, you want your U.S. dollar, if you're a U.S. company, you want the U.S. dollar to go up to appreciate. Why? Because now, because you have to make the payment on the foreign currency, you want your local currency to buy you more of that foreign currency. Here, your foreign currency depreciate. It worked against you, the opposite of having a receivable. If you had a receivable from the German company, you would have been better off if the U.S. dollar depreciate. And this is basically two examples. The thing that we don't cover in this session or in this financial accounting course is consolidated financial statements with the international subsidiaries. I do cover this topic in two different courses. And those two different courses are my advanced accounting course and my international accounting. I cover those what, way, way more in details. So as always, I would like to invite you to like this recording, visit my website for additional lectures and lessons if you're interested in supplementing your education, passing the CPA, CMA, enrolled agent exam, or just improve your professional career. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe, especially during those coronavirus days.